Sierra Leone had recorded many devastating epidemic blows over the last one decade, but the most devastating of them all was the Ebola epidemic, which claimed the lives of over 11,000 people. There was nothing like goodbye rituals or funeral ceremonies. Corpses were being stalled into white sacks and labeled with a black marker for any possible identification by family members. At the initial period of the epidemic, only the King Tom Cemetery was used for the burial of Ebola bodies. So this is the King Tom Cemetery, one of the two mass Ebola grave sites in the country. Now it is believed that there are about 6,000 or more people who have been buried here who died as a cause of Ebola. This is a memorial plaque bearing the names of the first 15 Ebola deceased to be buried in Freetown. At the bottom of the list is a two-year-old Aminata Kamara. The King Tom Cemetery holds a massive 500 meters long Ebola gravesite, divided into seven blocks, A to G. But the sanitary condition of these graves is heart-wrenching. James Hamilton is the city council sexton in charge of the mass Ebola cemetery at King Tom. It was a sad lament for seeing graves at this hole or no council to tear them bits. Seeing these graves in this condition makes me sad. Although the council is doing its best to keep them tidy, but I think the government should be helping the council out as it has many other things to concentrate on. Personally, I am not happy with the condition of these graves because if it continues like this, Sierra Leone will lose a very vital monument and will have no explanation to give to our children and grandchildren. What you will tell you, picking them, will go and picking them tomorrow. And then condition, you have graves at this hole, not good. This is Section G, containing over 3,000 children's graves, all of which has been covered by lush, unshaven green grass. Not even the plaques on the grave tops could be seen. Ebola made a devastating grip on Sierra Leone. It was a worst public emergency in modern times. Families and communities were shattered after the epidemic, only a little over 4,000 people managed to survive the virus, leaving most of them handicapped. One of the most hit communities in Freetown was Mabila. So I am quite sure that most of you would recognize this community, but if not, it is the Mabila community, the community which recorded the highest number of Ebola deaths in 2014. I contacted the disease to my child, and shortly after, my child, wife, and brother-in-law were all killed by the virus. I was healed of Ebola, but still, have joint pains and burning eyes. I had a sick car for a two for me, brother, and picking. So you tell me, brother, a woman for the one I speak to. My nephew fell ill, and there was no one to take care of him. So I stepped in, and that's how I contracted the virus. I am ill of Ebola, but I still experience eye bones from the rays of the sun. My dad was the first to die in my family, and later my mom. I lost a total of 15 members of my family, including my children, husband, and siblings. I often get joint pains even now. Yes. 
Regrettably, ever since I recovered from the virus, my manhood has not been functioning effectively as it were before now. Life for these survivors is bittersweet, filled with nostalgia. The side effects are many, but life must go on. By the time Sierra Leone was declared Ebola free on November 7, 2015, by the World Health Organization, 7 November 2015, the World Health Organization declares the end of the Ebola outbreak in Sierra Leone. The country had already lost a total number of 1,054 health workers, including 11 medical doctors. Amongst them was Dr. Sheikh Humar Khan, the country's leading expert on viral hemorrhagic fevers, who led the Ebola response in Kenema. Dr. Khan fearlessly fought to curtail the epidemic even when many feared death. The fallen hero eventually contracted the virus whilst treating patients at the Kenema Holding Center and later died at the treatment facility in Kailahu on 29th July. 2014. His death was a shock to the entire nation. As a way of compensating families of deceased health workers, the government allocated a total sum of $5,000 to each family. But did the families actually receive these monies? Dr. Amara Jambai is the former chief medical officer at the Ministry of Health. For each health worker, um, the family were to get about $5,000. I can remember. I'm not doing the, the right um, numbers now in terms of loans. Mm -hmm. But I would say this, um, not everyone had co uh, even collected all the money. Um, you know, we've gone out several several times to try to reach out to family members to come and collect uh, the money, but no, to avail not everyone. So we we still have that problem with us. Uh, in terms of uh, the challenges to the health system, it found us uh, on the weak side, and thus, in with regard to the management of the. Uh, scourge or the outbreak. Um, the ministry was on the weak side, uh, but at the tail end, we with support from partners, we were ob able to overcome, and that is why the disease that sort of uh, threatened our basic fabric of union as a nation, we were able to conquer it. So, so, so it was a big day. Those who survived the virus were enlisted to help medical practitioners in the fight against Ebola. Roads were barricaded. People were confined into their homes to allow health workers to go door to door in search of infected persons. Seriously ill patients were afraid to leave their homes to seek medical care. Seriously ill patients were afraid to go to treatment centers for fear of death. Corpses were buried 12 to 24 hours after death. The outbreak began slowly and silently, 
gradually building up to a burst of cases in late May and early June. The epidemic started in the villages of Pundu and Sukuma. Cases then increased exponentially in the last quarter of 2014, but November recorded the highest number of infections. A retrospective investigation by the World Health Organization revealed that the country's first case was a woman who was a guest at the home of the index case. In Meliandu, Guinea, when the host family became ill, she travelled back to her home in Sierra Leone and died there shortly after her return in early January. May their souls rest in peace. And all of those, even doctors, nurses, who lost their lives as a result of the Ebola epidemic in Sierra Leone in 2014. For the Sierra Leone Broadcasting Corporation, I am Justice Victor Jones.